So I love drawing pictures. So all the stuff we do with our prying tools, with our bars, with um, we have long pry bars. We've got we've got long like hooks and stuff. Everything is about lever a lot of things we do is about leverage and how to properly utilize leverage to um, to our maximum benefit. Starting out with the basic simple machines. It's like ancient Egypt, how people move stuff around, like a million years ago, how people, thousands of years ago, how people move stuff around. So we've got levers, which we know about. Pulleys we use a little bit here and there. Wheels and axles. Obviously the truck gets to a fire, so we have wheels and axles. Uh, inclined planes, imagine like a ramp. So like how do you get something from the ground up to somewhere higher without exerting a lot of energy, use a ramp. So inclined plane is that. Um, and screws. Archimedes screw for lifting water, screws for actually like gripping into wood. I feel like we're not really, we don't really use a lot of screws. Maybe like anchors if you were in like the, maybe in like the high speed, like sock world maybe. Really, yeah. But I don't even know. Um, and the wedge. Uh, we use wedges. A lot of our tools are wedges. An axe is a wedge. Um, so we talk about the ways that we, on all these simple machines, talk about how a load is moved by the force that we exert. And anything revol all involving mechanical advantage with these simple machines is all about maximi or, uh, multiplying the load that you put in onto like the thing that you want to move. So multiplying forces to make your job easier, right? So I just wanna go over the two classes. Well, there's three classes of levers. The one, the two that the Halgen bar actually utilizes are class one and class two. Extremely briefly, a class one lever is um, a lever where the fulcrum is located between the load and the force. So examples, common examples are seesaws, um, like a like a hammer, using like a claw hammer to pull a nail out of a piece of wood. It's that the the fulcrum being the center balance point, the load being on one side of that seesaw, and the force being on the other. He's out. <laughs> it's super boring I get it. Um, another example was a boat boat or just you know you can imagine that seesaw motion Mr. Laura told me this is a science I know I know it's a good brush up <laughs> class 2 levers are any kind of a, a mechanical advantage system where um, or a, a lever system where the fulcrum is on one end the load is in the middle and the force is on the opposite end imagine a uh, imagine a wheelbarrow right you got a bunch of weight in the middle of the wheelbarrow, you pick it up, you roll. The fulcrum is on that far end. Um, so, briefly, with the class one lever, right? Um, we, like I said, the fulcrum is in the middle. You're exerting force on one side, and the, and the load is on the other side. Good example of that is the uh, when we're using the ads to rotate around, ro rotate on the ads to like crush a door in or crush a door, to make that crush space for like an hour swing door. Um, another good example is the prying up roof deck using uh, using like the New York hook, right? So you get that end of the Z hook underneath of the underneath your load, one of your one of your rafters, and you pull back. The force is going up, your effort is going backwards, right? Or going down, as it were. Class two lever in our application, we've got using the uh, using the forks of the Halligan to pry a door to pull, push a door in, right? So you've got. Your fulcrum is like an inch or two back on the on the fork of the halogen on the door frame. Your effort is pushing forward, and the load is pushing forward. Right, so the load and the force are in the same direction. Mm. There's a whole bunch of other stuff I wrote on here, but we, all this makes more sense just to look at it and talk about it with, with tools. Um, so let's talk about mechanical advantage real quick. So Albert Einstein. I told you that wasn't gonna, that was gonna be quick. <laughs> That does not count. Oh, shut up. So the, the, there's two takeaways from any of this. The closer the fulcrum is to the load, the easier the load will be to lift. And the other takeaway is the longer the lever, the easier the lift will be. So this is all simple shit. So real quick, let's just talk about the seesaw, okay? If we've got two fat kids on a seesaw that weigh the same, the seesaw should balance Are equally, right? Their fat kids are throwing snowballs <laughs> as per the tradition. Um, so if there's two fat kids on a, on, a, on a seesaw, the way the same, the seesaw should sit level, right? If we have one fat kid and one, on one side and a skinny kid on the other side, what's gonna happen? Skinny kid goes up in the air, right? Well, what if we move the fulcrum? What if we move that center balance point closer to the fat kid? The fat kid and the skinny kid can balance each other if the fat kid is closer to the fulcrum. If the load is closer to the fulcrum, 
you can use less weight and less effort to balance both of those sides. Now, if the fulcrum is close to the fat kid and the skinny kid and his friend together push down on hit the skinny kid's side, they should be able to easily lift the fat kid, right? Right. The closer the fulcrum is to the load, the easier the lift will be, okay? The longer the lever, the easier the lift can be, right? So if we have a super long lever, let's say a whole team of fat kids are on one side of a seesaw. If we put that fulcrum real close, even, even that, it might be really heavy to lift that. But if we get a whole one, if we get a really long lever, we can push down that lever and it should be easy. What is, what is that one saying? If you, uh, if you made me a lever long enough, I could lift the moon or lift the earth. That's the wrong uh, quote. Give me a lever, uh, long enough lever and a fulcrum to put it on, I can yeah, Abraham Lincoln said that. Everybody knows that. Archimedes. <laughs> Archimedes? That's smart. I like that. That's why you're here. So, um, real quick, let's talk about... So, the mechanical advantage definition. The distance from... So, the actual, like, formula is the distance from the force to the fulcrum divided by the distance from the fulcrum to the load. It makes sense more sense when we talk about it in Halligan terms. I'm basically shit retarded, so do the best we can here. Which is fine, because that's all we really need. To that's all this is anyway, right? Our Halligan bars are 30 inches long, okay? The ads is two inches wide and it's six inches long. The pike from end to end is six inches long. Both of those are six inches. We talk about the, the ads pike triangle is five inches from that shaft to where the base of those would meet, okay? So we can base some of our mechanical advantages off of these lengths. Most of these are gonna be divided by 30 inches because the Halligan bar is 30 inches long, okay? So just keep in mind, like I said before, the longer the lever, the better it's gonna be. The closer the fulcrum is to the load, the easier the lift's gonna be, okay? So let's talk about inward swinging door with the adze. What do we normally do with that? The adze goes in, and we crank it sideways so that we can get that spreading force. It's a two inch spread. Two inches divided by 30 inches of lever. So a two inch, um, two inch load side and a 30 inch lever side. Simplify the fraction, it's a 15 to one mechanical advantage, okay? That's the most power that we can generate on any part of the Halligan, okay? I'm not, not talking about six inches of the ads and trying to like pop up with that, you know, using the entire arm to crank like this. We're talking about a rotational force of that ad sideways, okay? You put the ads in behind the doorstop, crank down toward you, crank up, you're spreading two inches. 15 to one mechanical advantage. You did a pretty good presentation of this the last time I was Okay, yeah, we can do that just right, to demonstrate. Yeah, to show that it was like super easy to Yeah, you can lift anything with that. Hundred percent. Um so that's inward swinging with the with the ads. Inward swinging with the fork. We've got a six inch fork side, thirty inch bar overall. The way uh it's been shown to calculate, they do like twenty-five inches of lever side and two inches of a uh, load side, because you've got like two inches in the door frame from the door stop to the actual door, it's like a two inch spread. Well, from the tip to the crotch, it's like two and a half inches, right? Right, so the idea is that when your forks load up, like right across here, say, <laughs> that's your, that's your ass. Like oh, oh, I miss it. Oh. <laughs> the tip to the crotch, two inches. <laughs> when your, your, your fulcrum would be here, your load would strike the door right about there. And then when you pry, that's your, um, that's your class two lever. Both forces are going in the same direction. We're talking about 27 to two mechanical advantage, simplify the fraction, it's a 13 and a half to one mechanical advantage. You don't need to know the numbers, you just need to know that the ads is the number one, that has the most mechanical advantage we can generate with the tool. The using the fork is a little bit less. This is your, your attacking with the ads is gonna be a sure thing if you remember to crank it sideways for the two inches versus trying to pry against the whole six inches of the ads. Now, skipping ahead to that, if you're forcing with the full six inches of that ad to like kind of pop the door out or kind of try and push it in with that hole, with all of this, we're only talking about a five to one mechanical advantage, okay? It's not a lot of mechanical advantage. 30 to six is the MA. You divide the fraction five to one, it's not much, okay? And then forcing with the ads, pike triangle. So like sometimes, let's say you go in, stick your ads in, crush down, and like it mostly goes, or maybe you go and force it with the fork after that, and it's like all but there. You can stick the fork and the ads behind the door frame, kind of crush in, you've seen that. That's a six to one mechanical advantage. 
just gives you a little bit more than going with the full six inches because it's five to one, or it's five inches instead of six. Don't need to remember all this stuff. My think my, my, the biggest takeaway is remember this and remember that that adds two inches of spread with a 30 inch lever is the maximum you can get on that bar anywhere. So if you're dealing with a tough door and it's not working, nothing's working, if you can get two inches at a time, just to keep taking bites on it with that adds, or just kind of, I'm just spitballing here now. If you, if you take the hook and marry them together, you make yourself a longer lever and then your mechanical advantage goes through the roof because now you're dealing with a, a 40 inch bar or like, well, more than that, like a 60 or 70 inch lever. So just some things to think about. Uh, if you have to pry open lunch. So this is what we talked about before. Ads is in. A lot of times you'll see guys try and do this, where they're prying back against the ads. That's that's still using the whole six inches where you're only getting five to one mechanical advantage. It's literally the weakest movement of the entire on the entire bar. To change that, all you have to do is change your direction. We're going from that six to six inches of trying to of attempted spread down to two. You can lift almost anything with that. That's like you could lift a fucking car with that if you had, you know, just the proper setup. We talked about the ads fork triangle. Again, that's kind of like I like to call a clearing move. I've heard guys refer to it as a clearing move. I got lunch on me. Get it in behind. <laughs> <laughs> if you can get this, these two in behind the door frame and pry backwards where this is the fulcrum right here, that gives you what I say. Six to one. Six to one. So that's huge. Um, it's gonna be huge. 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 So imagine I'm standing standing in front of a inward swinging door. I'm on the knob side right here, right? Fork goes in. Your door stop is gonna be is gonna be the, the fulcrum on this side of the halion. The load is gonna be the door on this side, right? That's because we do bevel to the door, right? So about two inches from there, that's your two inches of from fulcrum to load. Now look at this smoking spark. I'm gonna say load so many more times. But yeah, so when you go to get that, that's going to be your 15 or 13 and a half to one. It's not bad. It's a lot. Um, so yeah, just remember, that's, I, somebody described it to me really well. I, that has always stuck with me. The two inches, it's like it, when you go to the bar, if you try and like different things, going after a 10, you're going to fail. If you go after a two, your two, it's going to get you every time. It always works. There's so much fucking power in that two inches. Your sessions made it so much more sense. <laughs> <laughs> this is all true. All right. so, that's all I got. I just wanted to go over some shit real quick. Sounds good. Get it off.